Now we're going to work through some examples of evaluating some square roots. And as I said before, we're dealing with rational square roots right now. We'll get to the irrational square roots in the next section. So the first one here is the square root of 441. And our, our goal here is to factor this number and try to find some perfect squares that are factors of that number. So let's see what we can do. Well, this isn't divisible by 2, but how about 3? It turns out it is. There's a little trick you can use to see if a number is divisible by 3. You add up the digits, 4 plus 4 plus 1. And if the result that you get is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. So 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9, and that's a multiple of 3. So 441 is a multiple of 3. And it turns out that 441 is 3 times 147. And 147 is also divisible by 3. 3 times 147 can be written as 3 times 49. So this original problem could be rewritten as the square root of 3 squared times the 49, which is 7 squared. And when I square root the 3 squared and, and square root the 7 squared, I'm just going to end up with 3 times 7, which is 21. All right, let's do another. 576. Well, 576 is an even number. So if we divide that by 2, we get 288. The problem can be written as the square root of 2 times 288. And 288 can be divided by 2. So let's write this again. This is 2 times. This thing, 288, will factor as 2 times 144. So this is the square root of 2 squared. That 2 times 2 is my 2 squared. And then the 144 is a 12 squared. And you should see that the square root of 2 squared is 2, and the square root of the 12 squared is 12. So I get 2 times 12. And the answer is 24. Okay, let's look now at some decimal numbers. Some decimal numbers, not all of them, but some can be expressed as rational numbers that are perfect squares. And that makes it pretty easy to find the square root. As an example, look at this. The square root of 0.64. Well, this one can be solved by recognizing that 0.64 is 64 over 100. And 64 over 100, this could be rewritten, remember, as the square root of 64 over the square root of 100. And, and the square root of 64 is just 8, and the square root of 100 is 10. And that comes out to 0.8. Now, a lot of times you would do this step in your head. You would, you would just think to yourself, okay, the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 100 is 10. And you'd go straight to that step, and that's fine. Let's look at a couple more examples of this the square root of 0.49. Well, what does that equal? Well, 0.49 is the same thing as 49 hundredths. So we have the square root of 49 hundredths. And that's the same thing as the square root of 49 over the square root of 100. And the square root of the 49 is just 7. And the square root of the 100 is just 10 down in the denominator. So 7 tenths is my answer. And you could write that as 0.7. Your original problem was stated in decimal form, so it's appropriate to state your answer in decimal form. Here's another. The square root of 0 0.0225. Hmm. Well, 0 0.0225 is 225 ten thousandths. So I have the square root of 225 ten thousandths. So this is the square root of 225 over the square root of 10,000. And the square root of 225 is 15. 
and the square root of 10,000 is 100. So this is 15 hundredths. And as a decimal, that could be written as 0.15. And as before, the original problem was given in decimal form, so it's appropriate to give your answer in decimal form. And last of all, note that a square root will undo a squaring. So if I have, say, the number 6, and I square it, and then if I square root it, the square root there undoes the squaring, and I end up with 6. And you can do it the other way around. A square will undo a square root. So if I have the square root of 6, for example, and I take that and square it, I just get 6 again. So in general, you could state that concept in general terms like this. The square root of a squared is equal to a for any number a. And you could also say the square root of a squared is equal to a for any number a. So no matter how they're arranged, square rooting and squaring something will have no effect. The square root undoes the squaring. The one place where this does have an effect is if, um, if a is a negative number. If a is a negative number, you could square it and make it positive, and then square rooting it, you'll end up with the positive, or the absolute value of the number. But if a is negative, you couldn't do it this way, because you can't do the negative square root first. Okay, a couple of quick examples here. This first one, the square root of 4.84 squared. And you think, oh gosh, I've got a square, 4.84, and then find the square root of that number? Well, no, actually you don't. The answer just has to be 4.84. Because if you take anything and you square it and square root it, you just get that original thing. Same thing happens down here. The square root of 4 over 173 squared just has to equal... 4 over 173 because the square and the square root undo each other.